Hi, in this video, we are going to learn about scikit-learn pipeline API. Now we are going to see like, why do we need a scikit-learn pipeline API? What exactly is the scikit-learn pipeline API and what are the components of it? And also we will see at cases where you might, uh, you might, it might be better to stay away from the scikit-learn pipeline API. So let's get started. Now, if you take a typical machine learning model development life cycle, this is just part of it and not the complete life cycle. So uh, what, typically what you do is you get your business and data understanding, you frame your problem and then get your business and data understanding. You get your data finally based on your data understanding and then you do your exploratory analysis and the data analysis on top of it. And finally, you start your model development cycle. Now, in the model development cycle, there's a combination of data engineering and feature engineering activity, right? Now, typically what you do is you do some feature selection uh, based on your domain knowledge or even some analysis that you did. And then you enter your data cleaning cycle. Yeah, the data cleaning cycle can be inbuilt scikit-learn functions or it can be custom functions. And then you, based on your data type, whether it's a categorical value or numerical value, you do different uh, different transformations on top of it. If it's a numerical value, you do imputation, scaling, and if it's a categorical value, you still do imputation, but the imputation will be different than what you do for your numerical value. And then you do one not encoding. And finally, you fit an ML algorithm to it. It can be a tree algorithm, it can be a logistic regression or a linear regression, depending on the type of your problem. Now, this is just a sample pipeline now as as your data is uh, as your data is complex and you have uh, different data behavior different distribution of data you apply different other transformations and also you have your feature engineering done on top of it by combining multiple futures or even creating uh, additional features from one features right this is how your pipeline looks like now typically what is the challenge with this pipeline now when we think about deploying this pipeline uh, we typically have this particular program in a notebook or an id python file we have to uh, the final model that you save typically is just the model alone but you have to go and deploy each and every function separately of this and this creates a challenge of reproducibility when you are deploying that is one part of it second thing is the deployment is pretty complex in this case because you all you have to uh, make sure that the functions that you created during the training is similar to that you are deploying and also when you are doing like imputation or something like that there are some learned parameters Parameters. So you have to pickle the imputation object separately. You need to pick, pickle the scaling object separately. And then you also need to deploy. So the deployment is pretty complex. And the debugging in turn is also complex because you have multiple moving parts. Now, how can you make this particular pipeline pretty reproducible and the deployment make it easy and also enable faster debugging? That's where basically the scikit-learn pipeline comes into play. Right. So now what is scikit-learn pipeline? Now scikit-learn pipeline is nothing but a sequence of transformations. The transformations can be your pre-processing or feature engineering uh, activity that you do. And finally followed by an estimator. The estimator can be your algorithm models or anything, right? You have that you, you assemble everything together and execute as a single entity. Now I will give some example and I will also have a detailed session in my follow up video. But this is how below is how the pipeline looks like you have your data, you have pipeline, the pipeline initially it will be a bunch of transformers that you have the transformer can be an one not encoder or the transformation can be some uh, some data cleaning function or it can be a custom transform that you write for your specific purpose uh, and it can similarly you have multiple transformers for categorical you may have one transformer for uh, numerical you may have one set of transformers and these transformers in this case I have shown execute series here serially but sometimes you may want to execute it parallelly for performance reasons right now and then finally you have an estimator so the transformers are nothing but one that implements fit and transform function the estimators just have a fit function fit and predict function right so you put everything in a single pipeline and then you finally what you do is you kind of can run your uh, grid search or random search you can do evaluation and you can deploy the entire pipeline together so basically the scikit-learn pipeline gets together all the different components that I talked about in the previous slide into a single pipeline object. We can directly go and pickle or save the pipeline object and then deploy it directly. Every entity that we are using in the pipeline, the transformers and estimators are part of a single big object in this case. 
So this is how typically your pipeline looks like. If you take a typical, typically what we do is we just write a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we just take the data, we we process it, we impute the data, then again take the data frame, we pass it to a different transformer and everything, right? But in case of scikit-learn pipeline, you just take the data once and then create a pipeline object. So a typical example over here is I am first creating a uh, drop column uh, pipeline, right? a column transformer, which drops a particular set of columns. This drop feature is a list I am passing in this, right? So this will drop the columns. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking the, all the numerical uh, features that I have and I am sending it to the pipeline, which does imputing based on the mean. And then it does a standard scaling. And similarly for categorical, I am just doing one not encoding of the variables. Now these two numerical and ca categorical transformer, I am all, putting it one other column transformer and I'm also including the drop column, the numerical processing and the categorical processing, right? So now I have the transformer object. Then I create my final pipeline. I am putting my uh, transformer object, the space remover is another custom function that I have written. Uh, I'll go to the detail in my next video, but this is a custom function to remove spaces in the data. Right. And then this is the transform column that I uh, created on the, the top, the column transformer that I created on the top. This is the transform column. And finally, I have a logistic regression. So I have all this pipeline fit together. And finally, what I do is I can just call the pipeline dot fit. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, go take the data, pass through the entire pipeline component, and then it's finally going to give an fitted pipeline. Now what I can do is on the left hand side, I have the same thing on the right hand side. Once the pipeline is trained and you are comfortable with the pipeline uh, performance and everything, once you are tested and evaluated the pipeline, you can just uh, use job lib or pickle object to directly dump the pipeline. All the objects are dumped. And finally, you can just load back the pipeline uh, when you are deploying it and just call the pipeline score method with the same data. So all the objects are the pipeline in a single big entity that you can deploy. But there are some cases where you might not want to use the pipeline, right? And typically, those are the cases where you want better control on the deployment. Uh, say typically when you have an uh, pickled object, which is a pretty huge object, you want to fine tune each and every pipeline component. At that, at that time, the pipeline object might not be beneficial in case if you want to performance tune it better. A typical example can be maybe I have a part of feature engineering that I have done that does some calculation on three columns. And what I feel is doing deployment, maybe I have GPUs and I can just take that pipeline component and vectorize it into a huge uh, array and then push it into my uh, GPU. Right now, in that case, maybe you want better control on your pipeline. You may want to stay out of the scikit-learn pipeline. The second part is like if you are deploying some of the pipeline or uh, like even the entire pipeline in a different language altogether than you are developed. Say if you have done your coding in Python and then you pass it on to your software engineer team who can want to reproduce it in Java or some other language, then maybe you and they want to do like part by part on that. Then that case, maybe you want to stay away from scikit-learn pipeline. But apart from these two, the scikit-learn pipeline are a pretty convenient function for sharing your model for better reproducibility. There are a lot of time that is spent on testing the model and this reduces the testing and debugging cycle. And it's very easy to kind of go and get part of the pipeline component and do analysis on top of it, which I will cover in my detailed next video. Uh, but this is quickly about scikit-learn pipeline. Thank you very much.